Okay, in this video, we're going to look at circuit prototyping. Now, I've done a lot of prototyping, so I'll go through some of the techniques that I use and the products that are available. Now, many of you are probably familiar with a solderless breadboard, like this one here. They're very common and easy to use, and they have the isolation channel down the center where you could straddle your ICs across. And they also make a solder version of this board, which is the same size. It mimics uh, the solderless board. And you could actually just take your layout from your, from your breadboard and, and, and put it on this board here. Now you can get custom proto boards like this one here that's meant to fit into a, a PC. You can see the edge connector there. And as the same layout on the back, you have, a, you have a series of isolation channels so you can straddle ICs across there. And here's another example. This one fits into an Apple computer. You can see the edge connector there. And the same sort of idea on the back. You have your isolation channels where you could straddle your ICs. Now you can also get proto boards that are meant to fit into a card cage. You can see here it has a 22 pin edge connector. And has the same layout on the back. You have your isolation channels there for straddling the ICs. Now in most of my projects I prototype with vector board as we can see here. It's very simple. It's 0.1 inch space hole spacing on this board. And on the back you can see the copper strip. Okay, here's a project I built using that vector board. And you can see here where I've made my own isolation channels using this boring tool. So there's one line there, there's one there, and one there. That isolates the board into three parts for my uh, connector and my ICs and my LEDs. So this way you could actually make a very compact circuit because you could customize where you could put the, your isolation uh, uh, channels. We will also look at some of the enclosures that I use for my projects. So there's some plastic uh, box enclosures. Also you could get extruded aluminum, which makes a very clean uh, project like this one here. So next we'll have a look at each one of these techniques. Okay, back in the early days for circuit construction they used terminal strips with solder lugs. Now they would mount a couple of these strips on a chassis and solder their components to the solder lugs and then do all their point-to-point -point wiring. And you can see this technique in old TV sets. If you look at the chassis of the TV set, you usually see these terminal strips mounted uh, on the chassis. Next came the phenolic boards with mounting holes. Now the mounting holes weren't 0.1 inch hole spacing because integrated circuits haven't been invented yet. So they used flea clips, these little clips that they would press into the proto board and solder their components to these clips and do all their point-to-point -point wiring using this technique. So our next prototype technique is wire wrapping. So here's a wire wrap project, and you can see uh, the IC sockets on this, on this circuit board uh, have long leads for wire wrapping. If we look at the back, you can see uh, the wire wrap leads on all the sockets, and you use a wire wrapping tool, and you would use point-to-point uh, -point wiring with 30 gauge wire. Now this worked out very well because you didn't have to do any soldering, and you could get into some very, uh, very sophisticated uh, large project using wire wrapping. Now the most popular by far is your common solderless breadboard, like you see here. Now when they first came out, all the schools and universities latched onto this idea because it was very handy. And you can see here, you basically have your isolation channel on your board where you could straddle your ICs, and then you got your power buses that run uh, on the top and bottom. Now you could get some boards that have a, a wider isolation channel for mounting uh, microcontrollers that are wider than most ICs so you don't waste any of the, uh, the hole spacings. And this one here actually has gold contacts. If you're worried about contact resistance, I don't know if you can see that, but all the contacts in there are gold plated. Now you don't want to use these breadboards for radio frequency circuits because if you look at the back and if you see the, the contact arrays there, they become little capacitors and you'll have RF bleeding all over your circuit. So there's other techniques that we could use for, uh, for building RF circuits. Now for radio circuit uh, prototyping, you would use the dead bug or Manhattan technique. And here we see the dead bug technique where you take your integrated circuits, your ICs, and you glue them upside down on a solid copper clad board, which is your, which is your ground plane, that's your, your, your common ground. Then you cut out pieces of copper board and glue them um, to the copper clad board to create little islands, isolated islands, and use them for tie points. So you'd wire up all your, your, your circuit using 30 gauge uh, wire and using uh, isolated islands on your circuit board for the tie points. 
And the Manhattan technique is very similar to this. Now you could get solder puller boards like this one here that has the same pattern as the solderless board but it's a lot narrower. So it fits into some of the uh, plastic enclosures that you could get like this one here. And if you notice around the edge there's slots that will accept a circuit board. So you just take your proto board and cut it to length to fit into uh, to, into the box, and put all your components on the board, and solder them up, and install it in the box, and you have yourself a nice little clean project. Now with all the techniques that I've shown, this is my favorite one that I use the most. This is using the vector board with the copper strips, and I like this uh, this this technique because I can make my own isolation um, channels as you can see here so if I ever have to add anything say to this board say if I want to add an IC right here like that I could go underneath and just make an isolation channel across here and there's just wire up uh, the circuitry for that for that chip so it's very uh, versatile and if you plan it right you could actually get pretty compact uh, circuits uh, onto a small piece of board so it's very efficient so that's my favorite of all the techniques and I hope this video has uh, given you guys some ideas on how you could do your own prototyping